Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this is the final episode of this week's watches for this year don't worry I'll be back next year doing more uh, but this is the finale if you will of 2023 and to celebrate we did have 20 watches for this drop which is a huge amount and it's taken me a huge amount of time to go through all these and get them ready for the drop it's been a hell of a lot of fun though um, but there are only 17 on the table because three have already sold which is great so it means this is going to be an incredible incredibly long video go get yourself a tea or a coffee or if it's in the evening pour a glass of wine and get a uh, maybe a dram of whiskey whatever you prefer and get comfortable because we're going to be here for a while now as always if you are tuning into this video just to see one watch like the beautiful gold Amiga that's on the table in the description there is every watch listed there's a timestamp so you can skip to that specific watch there's also a link to the website where you can see all the photos details and don't forget under points of mention there are additional photos of every single watch for sale so it's not just the nine photos that are on the website we do that as standard for every single watch regardless of price point because i think it's an important thing for you to be able to get everything you could possibly need all right there on the website to make your decision now as i said there was 20 and a few of those watches have already gone one of them was the watch i was wearing in last week's episode which was a beautiful night uh, 18 karat gold mega jump hour um, if you missed that, go back and see the start of that video after this one and you'll see that beautiful watch that has already been purchased. So I, I did have quite a few inquiries on that one, which I'm not too surprised by, to be honest, uh, but it's off to a very good home. And if you're watching this, I know you're going to enjoy that for the long term. Um, so yeah, there really is a bit of everything on the table as well as a ladies watch, some uh, more mid-sized pieces. Everything in between, including a factory sealed Zenith, which I can't wait to show you guys. I believe it to be one of the lowest number of production Zeniths made at only 50, uh, including the H Moser over here and everything you could possibly imagine. So it's going to be a fun one. Um, so buckle in, get prepared. Now, I do want to just quickly say this video goes out on Saturday the 16th. Um, I am in that following week up until the Friday the 22nd. That will be my final day in the office. So if you want to make a purchase, please do so as soon as possible, especially with Christmas coming up. If you are international uh, outside of the UK, the deadline for shipping has, has already passed. Um, however, we can still ship. We will still ship via DHL Express um, and it will get there when it gets there. But I can't guarantee it before Christmas anymore, as I'm sure you can all appreciate um, because of custom times and all that kind of stuff that, that go into account with that. Uh, the banner has been on the top of the page pretty much the whole of December. So hopefully you've all seen it by now and you know the deadlines. If not, head over to the website. You can see it there. For the UK, I'm calling the deadline um, the for shipping in the UK uh, as the 20th of December, which is Wednesday. Um, if you order after Wednesday, I will still ship. I will even ship on Friday um, for apparently Saturday delivery. Apparently they're doing that Saturday the 20th. 3rd of December they're still delivering uh, but I cannot guarantee it after Wednesday so Wednesday being the final day for delivery Thursday um, I cannot guarantee it will get to you before Christmas so I apologize for any delays but again I feel I've done everything I possibly can and unfortunately it is on you guys and girls now to get your orders in uh, before it's too late I've had a few people asking um, if they can collect on the Saturday the 23rd I'm going to be out of here guys you know I have a family I want to spend some time uh, with my family over Christmas as I'm sure you guys do and as much as I want to try and make everyone happy, I'm, I'm calling it there. I'm, I'm calling it there. 20 seconds is more than enough time for everything. So please act as soon as possible. Okay, before we start on the watches on the table, let's start with what's on wrist. I'm wearing a beautiful watch that does need a service, so it probably won't be ready for a little while yet because watchmakers close over December until the new year. So there's going to be a bit of delay with some of the vintage pieces I've got. I've got quite a few amazing pieces, but they need work. So there is going to be a delay. Uh, this is a beautiful Amiga Seamaster from 1954-56, let me check, 1954, so super early, and it's tail assigned as well. It's gold capped, not solid gold, but a really bu beautiful bumper automatic, um, and I'm going to enjoy it over December, why not? Um, <laughs> so now that we've got that out of the way, let's start with the watches on the table, and we're going to start with what will be the quicker one. Um, I'm going to steal some of their own photos um, from the website and it will be stated as such on the website. So any photos you see of the watch that isn't packaged isn't the photo of this exact watch, it's a photo of the reference. Hopefully that makes sense. But let's take a closer look at this then. So starting this week off with a watch that I can't really show you properly and I apologise for that, but it is factory sealed as in it's never been opened 
uh, and this is how it was delivered from Zenith. Um, so what you're looking at right here is a Zenith El Primero. This is a limited edition uh, for Collective, which is an American collection group um, that have been going for quite a while now. Now this one is limited to 50 pieces total, which I believe puts it up there with probably one of the most limited Zeniths uh, that they've produced in, in recent years, at least in the modern era of Zenith, because typically a limited edition, usually around 250 at least, um, if not a lot more. So to have only 50, incredibly limited, and it has this beautiful white dial. As I said in the intro to this one, head over to the website, you'll be able to see um, the photos I've used from Collective and Zenith's website, uh, so you can see the watch in a bit more detail, and as I say, credit has been given to them, so hopefully there's no problems there, uh, because this one is completely in its packaging. I can't take it out, um, or I could, but then I, I removed that option from someone else. Nice exhibition case back right there featuring an automatic Zenith El Primero Calibre 4061. I won't bore you with the reference to this one, incredibly long reference as always with Zenith. Uh, and this one's from January 2020 with its box and paperwork. It comes with two additional unworn Zenith straps as well, uh, which is really, really great. So you've got the one that it's obviously on and then two additionals as well as the complete set from January 2020. Now this watch is 38 mil by 46.5 mil look to look. 14 mil on the thickness and 19 mil on the looks. So endless options if you're not a fan of the black fabric canvas style strap. Um, it does have a Zenith sign deployment there as well. And yeah, this is my first time showing a sealed watch on the video. So I apologize, I can't really show you much. Um, but as I say, it will be well worth picking up for those of you who are interested. So go check it out on the website today. From one collective limited edition, let's go over to another with the H Moser and C Pioneer Sensor Seconds. This is the CO2 for collective, an incredible limited edition. So let's take a closer now look. Now on to a H Moser and C. I've been fortunate enough to have quite a few of these over the years and have even sourced a few privately for a couple of collectors. But this is the first one I've had from collective. So this is a collective limited edition just like the zenith we looked at uh, so it's exclusive only to their members and again a 50 piece limited edition so very limited this is the pioneer central seconds uh, reference with this gorgeous dynamic green dial it is very hard to capture this dial because it doesn't look the same in any position some positions it goes this lime green in other positions it goes this vibrant green and other positions black it really is dynamic and it's well worth seeing in the metal if you have the opportunity the reference to this one is 3200-1210 it comes on its original bracelet and comes with two additional h moser and c straps in the box as well as we flip it over you're presented with a gorgeous h moser and c movement that is a automatic um caliber uh, 200 inside so a, a movement that they use across the board it has no date manually wound and automatic and as i say it comes on its original bracelet all links included and it has a very nifty glide adjust system so you can see it under the clasp right there and the logo is actually a button i love this so the button you press it in and then you can adjust on the fly as you go which means you can actually adjust it on wrist so once it's on wrist you can slide as such and position it where you want it to be which is really really handy and again it's incorporated beautifully this watch is worn but it's not overly worn at all there's a couple of hairline scratches here and there uh, and it's from april 2021 with everything so let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions another area where this watch really really shines because it is not a small watch at 43 millimeters but it wears so so well and it feels like a very comfortable sports watch. Um, so what you're looking at here dimension wise is 43 mil by 50.5 mil lug to lug, only 12 mil thick and 22 mil on the lugs. So you've got the bracelet and the additional straps included. So go check out this incredible watch on the website today. From there, something quite different with a beautiful 36 mil IWC automatic pilot's watch on its original bracelet. You really cannot go wrong with these reference. The smaller size with no bezel just means it's all dial. They wear so, so well. So let's take a closer. Next look. up, this gorgeous IWC automatic pilot's watch in 36 millimeters. It really is fantastic. And I was speaking with someone recently about this exact that watch saying about how IWC are probably the most quintessentially known uh, brand for pilots watches and they're also the ones that seem to do some of the best proportions so of course they have their bigger pilots watch 
um, even some of the crazy sizes, but they also do sizes like this in the 36 mil, which I think is really, really great because you get the aesthetic without that crazy size that typically comes with them. Now, this is the IW324010 from circa 2023. Now, this watch does come with its original bracelet, as you can see, which has a beautifully incorporated deployment bracelet. As we close it up, you can see it sits really, really nicely in there and opens up as such. Now this bracelet only has enough links to fit a seven inch wrist, so please do keep that in mind. Additional links can still be purchased from IWC, uh, but we wouldn't be able to source them for you directly, I'm afraid. So this watch does come with an earlier IWC box, which has had that typical thing that IWC boxes do, where they go very sticky. The uh, the lacquer or the coating that they put on whatever it is just seems to come off. Breitling boxes used to do it and the IWC boxes do it as well, unfortunately. So this has one of those boxes and the paperwork is unsigned, but we have a record of the registration of the watch with IWC showing the extended warranty until 2030. So it's got all of that with it. Now inside here is an automatic IWC caliber 35111 behind that beautifully designed case back and the bracelet just incorporates into the design so perfectly. Um, but at 18 mil, you could easily swap this out for leathers, rubbers, NATOs, whatever you want, and you've got all the options there with the screw down crown at three o'clock as well. So let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go paired on my seven inch wrist, a very, very gorgeous watch. And the proportions, as I've mentioned a million times, are perfect, as you can see. So right here, 36 mil by 46 mil lug to lug. 10.5mm uh, thick and 18mm on the lugs, so endless options for swapping this one out into some incredible straps, but go check out this watch on the website today. From there over to a clean and simple but amazing Grand Seiko Heritage Spring Drive, uh, this is the Black Dial, the SBGA301, an absolute bargain for a Grand Seiko, let's take a close look. Now on to Grand Seiko time, and this is the Grand Seiko Classic Heritage Spring Drive in black, you really can't get more clean when it comes to aesthetic than this with the power reserve on the dial and the date and the beautiful Zuratsu finished hands and indices against that glossy black dial, which I think just really works. So this is the reference SBGA301, and this watch comes on its original bracelet, all of its links included, with a nice push button clasp as you'd expect. Sticker's still on the case back right there, and behind that case back is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Caliber 9R65. So for those of you that don't know about Spring Drive, go do some research, it's very, very interesting. I will not try and even begin to explain how it all works because it is far beyond my understanding of um, of all of it, really. It is incredibly complex, but the, the gist of it is you have a mechanical uh, watch with a quartz oscillator. So it's combining both quartz and mechanical. Very, very clever indeed. Signed screw down crown at three o'clock. And this one's from June 2023 with its box and paperwork. It has been worn probably once or twice, to be honest. It's in very, 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 very good condition, ready to be worn and enjoyed. So I wouldn't hesitate on this one. And again, priced incredibly well. So let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, very, very comfortable at 40 mil by 48.5 mil lug to lug, only 12.5 mil on the thickness and 19 mil on the lugs with drilled lug holes to make strap changing nice and easy. A nice black leather strap would absolutely look killer on this watch as well as the bracelet, best of both worlds. So go check out this watch on the website today. Now onto an Amiga Speedmaster Automatic. This is the 40 mil reference, reverse panda as we call it. A really, really gorgeous piece. I love the contrast here, especially with the slight hints of red. It almost feels Paul Newman-esque. Um, but not quite like directly, so really, really nice. Let's take a close look at now, this Now on to, in my opinion, a bit of a hidden gem among the Amiga Speedmaster lineup. This is the Amiga Speedmaster Automatic in 40 mil, um, and this is specifically the reference 3210.51.00, and it's from around circa 2008, and it does come with a later Amiga box and its booklets, as well as two cards, as you'll see. I've also included a very nice glossy black leather strap. That's not an Amiga strap. Strap. It's a generic strap in the box to switch out from the bracelet. Now the bracelet, as you can see, really, really nice. It does have some wear, as you'd expect, and a nice signed Speedmaster case back, as you can see, right there. And inside is the automatic Amiga Caliber 1164. Now the reason I absolutely love this watch is, one, the layout. The layout is really nice with the chronograph over to the left. 
date at three o'clock, you have the reverse panda, so you have a black dial with white subdials, but also you have lots of pops of red on that dial. And as I said in the intro, it really gives me sort of a Paul Newman homage um, without being too much of a Paul Newman homage, if that makes sense. You've got the subtle details, pops of red, pops of white, and the jet black, all with a black aluminium bezel right there. I think it really works. And again, I, I really do believe these are massively underrated in the watch world at the moment. A lot of people are putting emphasis on certain rare Speedmasters, of course, but I think some of these automatics, they offer a huge amount of value in the world of chronographs um, and are often slept on. So let's put it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, as you can see, great proportions as, you, as you'd expect with these automatic references. Um, so this is 40 mil by 45.5 mil look to look, 14.5 mil on the thickness, and again, 19 mil on the looks. There are options out there, but between the bracelet and the leather strap I'm including, I think you're gonna be set to be honest. So go check out this beautiful watch on the website today. From there over to a well-loved and well-used as they should be Tudor Black Bay Steel on um, a Forstner strap, and it does come with the Tudor leather strap and NATO. A really, really great watch, a great price, and everything can be sorted if you wanted it to be, as in like fully polished, a new crystal from Tudor. Uh, obviously, it does come with extra cost, but it can be done. So if you're just wanting a watch you can pick up, wear, and not worry about scratching, use as a beater, this is probably one to snap up. So let's take a closer look. Now on to a well-loved and well-used Tudor Black Bay Steel. That's the Black Bay 41 with the steel bezel, the black dial. Very nice contrast in my opinion and very monochromatic. I really like this reference. So this is the reference 79730 and this comes paired on a Forstner Speedmaster style bracelet. Uh, which fits this watch very nicely and actually I, I kind of like it. At first I wasn't a fan of this combination but as the, the more I keep seeing it the more I actually like the combination together and I think it really works. So this reference comes with the original leather strap by Tudor and original NATO by Tudor that are both in the box but again this bracelet is included um, whether you want to use it or not is completely up to you. So this one's from January 20, 20, uh, 2018 and inside behind that case back is an automatic, let me show that case back, there you go, uh, is an automatic Tudor caliber MT5612. Sign screw down crown at three o'clock with a date as well as you'd expect. So this watch, as I mentioned, is well loved and well used. You can see the scratches here. Uh, this person wore this watch on a desk and uh, this part was clearly rubbing against a laptop or something like that. It's quite common to see this sort of stuff. We've left it as is, uh, but again, we can have the thing completely repolished and looking like new again on request. Um, but again, there is a small scratch on the crystal right there, which is photographed under the additional uh, photo. So be sure to see that it's circled so you can see it. Um, so with that scratch, we'd obviously ideally want to replace the crystal and repolish the whole watch. That'd take a huge amount of time. It would add a huge amount of cost to the watch. Um, so leaving it as is gives you the option to go do that yourself if you wish, or enjoy the watch as is and use it as a watch that you're just going to wear the life out of, which I kind of like. I like that some watches get worn like that, and this would be the perfect example of that. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, as you can see. So this is 41 mil by 49.5 mil lug to lug, 14 mil on the thickness and 22 mil on the lugs. So between the bracelet, the leather strap and the NATO, I think you're more than set to enjoy this watch. So go check it out on the website today. From there over to a Vertex. This is an MP45 on the rubber strap and it's the manually wound black dial. We also have the Arctic white on the website. So it's great to have both options the black and the white, they're priced the same, so let's take a closer Now onto a Vertex, and anyone who knows me knows I'm a huge fan of Vertex and what Don over at Vertex is doing with the brand. I think he's done a fantastic job with all the military heritage and history and bringing it back into a modern way. I think it's really great. So this is the MP45M, which stands for manually wound. Um, and this is the classic black dial. As I mentioned in the intro, I also have the Arctic white on the website. So it's great to have both options right here and they're priced the same. So this one's from May, 2019, comes complete with his box paperwork and additional straps. Um, it's a nice Pelican case. Be sure to check that out on the website. As we rotate, you'll see a nice signed crown recessed into the case and a single pusher, which is a mono pusher, meaning that you start, stop and reset the chronograph all through the one pusher. Very, very nicely done. As we flip it over, a nicely decorated manually wound uh, Salita SW510MP 
inside and right now paired on its original Vertex rubber strap, which I think suits the watch perfectly. All the straps are very nice, but this one I think is the best strap for the watch personally. So as I say, both the white and the black, if you want a uh, book an appointment, come see both and choose one because I tell you the price they are, it's really, really fantastic. So let's show on wrist and talk dimension. And there we are on my seven inch wrist, the manually wound model. So this model is slightly thinner than the automatic. And in my opinion, it makes that, that sort of quite a big difference uh, on the wrist. And I find this one to be the most comfortable. So this is 42 by 49 mil lug to lug, 14.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lugs. So endless options for swapping this one out. But I have to say this rubber strap pairing is my favorite, especially with the broad arrow. Um, right there on the rubber strap as well as the dial. So go check this one out on the website today. From there over to a Longines Legend Diver, this is the Heritage Bronze Green Dial, a really, really cool piece. This has just come back from uh, full service with Longines under its warranty, so it's ready to go and be enjoyed. Let's take a closer look. Now to the Longines Legend Diver in bronze, and this has that gorgeous green dial which just plays with the light beautifully. Again, sort of similar to the Moser in the fact that some lights it goes black, some lights it's a bit more vibrant, and other lights a bit more subdued, but either way, a very beautiful tone. And I think, personally, I think it works beautifully with the bronze. Green and bronze always goes well together, especially with a brown strap. So this is the reference L3.774.1.50.2. Thank you, Longines, for the incredibly short reference. Um, <laughs> as we flip it out over, you're presented by a steel case back. Uh, which still has a sticker on it, really nicely decorated with the diver right there with his spear. Very, very cool. And behind that is an automatic Longines caliber L888. The bottom crown is to use the watch, so you can wind and set as you'd expect. Um, and then the top crown, which is also screwed down by the way, is to do the rotating bezel. Let's get back in focus. So you can rotate as you wish and then screw back down both screw down, which is nice. As I say, bronze, um, so it will patina, it will develop patina, it will oxidize, that is what happens. This, I think, is a really nice stage of the oxidization because it's not the bright yellow gold that bronze looks when it's brand new. It, this is more dull, it's going almost rosy color, and it's starting to develop some nice warm tones. I'm a big fan when bronze is like this. You also have a bronze buckle as well. And it comes with a nice big box. So this one is from January 2021 with a humongous and heavy box with a nice book inside. It comes with additional strap and uh, strap changing tool, as you can see from the photos. So go check those out. Those out. But let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. It is not a small watch, but it is a very comfortable watch. And I'm quite surprised by how well it wears all considered. And I think it suits the design and the aesthetic really nicely. So this is 42 mil by 52 mil look to look, 12 mil on the thickness and 22 mil on the lugs. So go check this beautiful watch out on the website today. Now we're gonna go on to what is probably my favorite on the table, probably unsurprisingly, that is this nine carat gold Amiga on an integrated nine carat gold bracelet. This one comes with its box and papers. Some of you may remember this. I owned this watch myself for quite a while. I loved, enjoyed it, sold it to a very good collector who's probably watching this video and he has part X'd it back in with some other stuff. So really great to have it back. It's such a beautiful example. It's gonna make someone very happy. So let's take a closer look. Now it's no surprise this beautiful watch is a favorite for me in this week's drop and what you're looking at is a gorgeous nine carat gold Amiga on its original nine carat gold integrated bracelet, which just has the most incredible finishing on it. And again, they just don't seem to make watches like this anymore. How soft and supple this bracelet is and how incredibly detailed all of those fine lines are. And it just looks like a piece of ribbon, but it's all nine carat gold. Really, really beautiful, made by Amiga as you'd expect, and a nice, simple, clean dial um, as well. So this is a reference 331.2541, and this watch is from November 1968 with its original box and paperwork, which is absolutely beautiful. You have a signed crown at three o'clock, date at three o'clock, and a nice plain case back, which hasn't had an engraving, which is always nice as well. Um, we can always have it engraved if you wish. Personally, I say don't, don't engrave them, leave them as they are. But inside is a manually wound Amiga Caliber 613. 
So let's show you how this bracelet works. So it is a pretty much one size fits all, uh, as in you can't um, extend, you can shorten, but it requires a jeweler basically cutting part of the bracelet and then soldering it back together. So ideally we really don't like doing it. Um, but as you can see, you have three notches on the clasp right there. When you lift it open, you'll see there's another uh, part here. Again, I apologize, I'm doing this through a camera screen. So you open up the bracelet, like so, you have this other lever that you need to lift up and that helps to lock the, the latch down. You then bring over the other part, which you can see, and then you can place it into one of three grooves. You can either do it on this side and fold down. I find it easier to put it straight into these parts. So obviously on the furthest it will be the loosest and on the closest it will be the tightest. This will fit a seven inch wrist and then you just close it down like such. You can see you have this nice large gap here, that's on the loosest when you're on the tightest. Let me show you, it, uh, that gap disappears pretty much. I don't think I went into the tightest, let's make sure I go into the tightest. And there you go, that gap now disappears and the clasp sits beautifully in there. So let's show this watch on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, incredible proportions that you can see here, 33.5 mil by 33.5 mil. And that is because this part is perfectly round and absolutely beautiful. Uh, you're looking at nine mil on the thickness and 20 mil at the lugs that obviously taper down towards the clasp. A really, really gorgeous example and one well worth picking up if you're into full gold watches like this because they are hard to find this nice. So go check it out on the website today. From there on to another watch I've owned in the past and that's this awesome Oris Artix GT. It was actually one of my first proper Swiss watches. It's always great to get one in if I can, but they're very hard to find, especially this exact configuration with the black and the white, as opposed to all black. I think this is the most attractive, so let's take a closer look. Now on to the Oris Artix GT day date. The Artix line, in my opinion, was one of the most underrated among the Oris lineup because most of the focus was rightfully so on the Aquis and other models, which have done very, very well for them. Whereas this sports line, which is very motor car inspired, I feel like um, was left pretty much you know, un unrealized within the, the family and I think discontinued as well. So this reference, as you can see, has a beautiful black dial, white rim and black ceramic bezel. I think that contrast works beautifully and the placement of the day date is also wonderful. Really simple, but really, really elegant. I won't bore you with the reference because it is incredibly long. Uh, and as you can see, it comes on its original bracelet, which again has this really nice brushed and polished finish and a nice solid robust clasp as you'd expect. All the links are included in the box. And as we flip it over, a nice exhibition case back with that iconic Oris Red Rotor, and that is the automatic Oris Caliber 735. Now this watch is from circa 2020 with its box and paperwork. Screw down crown at three o'clock. I'm obviously biased when it comes to this watch because this was one of my first um, Swiss watches that I ever owned and I regret it regularly but every time I have the watch again I tend not to wear it too much just because of the other options I have and I think I'm more of a vintage guy now uh, with watches than I am modern um, but this is one of those watches that just ticks every box and it is so good for the price that I think someone is going to definitely enjoy this so let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, as you can see, a very, very nice proportioned watch at 41.5 mil by 48 mil lug to lug. So definitely not the smallest, but again, wears really comfortably under that 50 mil lug to lug. 11.5 mil on the thickness and 21 mil on the lug. So a little awkward, but there are options out there. But to be honest, the bracelet is definitely the winner for me. So go check it out on the website today. From there to an unworn and stickered Nevada F77. This is the brown smoked no date automatic on its bracer. As I say, fully stickered, it's not been worn. So let's take a close look at this. Now one. on to a Nevada F77. This is a brown smoked no date dial, one of the newer releases. And this F77 range has been a, a pretty big hit for them um, because it, it borders that 70s aesthetic with modern aesthetic quite well, in my opinion. It's not too 70s and it's not too modern, it's this nice in-between. And again, based on an old model of uh, Nevada's, I think it works really, re really well. And this dial is incredibly interesting as well, as you can see. Uh, so the reference to this one is 68002A77. Uh, as you can see, it is completely stickered and unworn. Uh, obviously, it's been on my wrist to do the, f uh, the photograph and it will be on my wrist in a second to show you proportions. Sticker still on the case back and a really nice signed case back. 
and inside an automatic Soprod caliber P024. This watch is from 2023 with its box and paperwork and ready to be enjoyed. Screw down crown at three o'clock as well and I like the fact they give you the option of date or no dates. I wish more brands would do that because then that would solve the constant debate of should you have a date, shouldn't you have a date? Well, if you want a date, you can get a date and if you don't want a date, here it is. So well done Nevada for ticking everyone's box. But let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. The proportions are really, really great. And this dial, it's definitely attractive. It has this nice tone to it, which in certain lights is incredibly bright and almost blinding. And then in other lights, it becomes this very dull gray, which I think is really, really attractive. Uh, so it's 37 mil by 44.5 mil look to look, 11.5 mil on the thickness and 21.5 mil at the lugs tapering down nicely to the clasp. So go check out this incredible watch on the website today. From there, let's go over to the Helios C43. This is the pastel blue with the ETA movement, a slightly earlier one from around 2018. Really nice example, really great piece. So let's take a closer look. I have been quite fortunate to have stocked and owned many Halios over the years, and this is still one of my favorites. This is the C43 in pastel blue, as you can see, and again, a matching date wheel. I wish more brands would do that because it incorporates that date so beautifully and seamlessly to the dial. As you can see in the contrast of the black outline and the white loom on the hands and the indices, is so attractive. I think this watch really nails design and proportion and everything so, so well, and the price point is also fantastic. Signed screw down crown at three o'clock, and as we flip it over, a signed screw down case back. This is a C4 reference, as I said, it's the C43, and inside is an automatic ETA 2824-2, and this watch is from circa 2018, with no box or paperwork, it is watch only, but it's paired on a very nice and attractive, in my opinion, brown suede strap, which I think suits the design perfectly. Obviously, with a blue dial like this, you could play around with straps, see what you find um, that works best. But for me, this combination really does hit the spot. And as I say, the, the sort of star of the show is obviously that dial and that dial color. It's very, very subtle and it's very, very nice. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And there we are on my seven inch wrist. Very, very attractive and very comfortable. This is 40 mil by 46.5 mil lug to lug, 12 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lug. So endless options for swapping this one out. If you're not a fan of the brown suede, but if you're not, I'd ask what's wrong with you? This looks amazing. <laughs> so go check it out on the website today. Now on to an out of order limited edition Scotch on the rocks. Very, very cool colorway, very nice concept. And this is actually a limited edition in association with Barbara Palum Palumbo. I apologize, Barbara, if I butchered your last name. Uh, we both follow each other on Instagram. Actually, a very interesting uh, person in the watch world. She does great things. So a really interesting limited edition in collaboration with her. I believe for her 50th birthday. I apologize if I'm getting all that wrong. But let's take a closer look at that one. Now on to a really cool limited edition out of order GMT nicknamed Scotch on the Rocks. And you can read more about why this was created and who for on the website. So go check that out. But the color scope Scheme, uh, I can't English today. The color scheme here is absolutely incredible. You can really see the inspiration for the Scotch on the Rocks. I think it's a very, very nice nod in terms of color scheme and just execution, especially with the GMT bezel. And the fact they've included a GMT function at this price point is incredible. So the case is this almost gunmetal finish to it, which is really, really interesting. You can see on the side right there, made in Italy, um, which is nice and faint, thankfully. It's not like too bold and too big. Screw down crown at three o'clock. And as we flip it over, a very nice laser engraved case back with the number out of 50 proudly stated on there. And inside is an automatic Seiko caliber NH34A. It comes on its original sort of cream suede strap with matching stitching. Again, a nice attention to detail and a matching uh, signed buckle as well. It does come with its box and paperwork, and the great thing is the papers is literally just a piece of paper, nice and simple, but the box is actually a cocktail shaker. Again, a very, very nice uh, attention to detail that at this price point, I think is fantastic. You're basically getting a very cool cocktail shaker that happens to have an automatic GMT watch in it at the price point is ridiculous. So go check this one out, snap it up while you can, but let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And there we go, on my seven inch wrist, perfect proportions and the watch really, really does look great. So this is 40 mil by 48 mil look to look, 13 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the look. So endless options for this one. Go check out this beautiful watch on the website today. 
Now onto a Marathon Steel Navigator 41mm in quartz, a very clean classic aesthetic and a, just a versatile watch that you can use for pretty much anything. So let's take a closer look at that one. Now onto a Marathon Navigator quartz 41mm with luminous tubes as you can see really nicely done on the dial and the handset and you have that radioactive symbol on the dial, which is always really nice to see, really fun. And the numerals, in my opinion, on the bezel were super attractive, really sort of like bold. Um, as you can see in the bezel rotates both ways, so nice and easy to use, date over at 430, all the functionality you could possibly want with the robustness of quartz, and the case is built like a solid tank. Uh, with this sort of bead blasted or sand blasted case, very aesthetically pleasing. Reference is SS Nav or SS Nav D inside a quartz movement, and this is from July 2023 with its box and paperwork and its original black NATO strap, which really suits the watch. But the reality is, you could easily swap it out for anything you want with drilled lug holes. As we f remove the NATO, so you can see the case back, you can see all of the markings proudly stated right there from reference serial all the details you could possibly want and a battery cover to make battery changes nice and easy without having to take off a case back or take apart the watch so you can do it all yourself if you wanted to but as always i would recommend having a watchmaker do batteries just to be sure it gets done correctly um, not a huge amount more to say about this one other than if you're after a watch that is an absolute tank you can do anything with you're looking at it right here. So let's show on wrist and torque dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, very nicely proportioned. I would personally be putting this on like a nice black leather with a two stitch or something. Uh, I think that would look really, really cool. So this is 41 mil by 48 mil lug to lug, 10.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lugs with drilled lug holes to make strap changing nice and easy. So go check out this watch on the website today. Now onto a vintage Seiko, who doesn't love one? This is a 1970s Seiko Lordmatic automatic in 36 mil quintessential Lordmatic Seiko. You cannot go wrong with something like this. Very interesting engraving on the back as well. Let's take a closer look. Now on to vintage Seiko Lordmatic, quintessential and classic at 36 millimeters. This really is a gorgeous watch and priced so, so well. So I'd snap this up if you're after something like this. The dial is white and it features an ever so faint linen texture. When you look very closely, you can see it. It's really, really subtle and really beautiful. LM stated proudly on the dial for Lordmatic, as you can see, and this watch is from circa January 1970, because with Seikos, you can date them via, via the serial number and also the reference. So this is a reference 5601-9000. As we flip the watch over, you can see a nice uh, engraving on there, which is always very attractive. I'll try and put on the website what that means. Um, we've had some conflicting uh, opinions of what it means, but I believe we've found definitively what it actually says, because um, obviously I can't read it. And inside behind that case back is an automatic Seiko Calibre 5601. Goes out saying this is watch only, it doesn't come with any box or paperwork, but it's paired on a very attractive Gekota leather strap, which I think suits the watch perfectly, in my opinion. So let's show this watch on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. This watch really does everything at such a good price point in my opinion. This is 36 mil by 42 mil lug to lug, only 10 mil thick and 18 mil on the lug, so endless options. If you've never had a vintage watch, this may be a great place to start, or if you're thinking of gifting someone a vintage watch, this is definitely something to consider. So go check out this beautiful watch on the website today. Now on to a beautiful ladies show pod. This is a 1990s show pod since St. Moritz. I apologize for the butchering. I can't English today. It's almost too many watches. Uh, steel and gold in 23 mil on its bracelet. Let's take a closer look at that one. Now on to a lovely ladies watch, which is incredibly affordable for what it is. That is a 90s show pod St. Moritz with the beautiful 18 karat gold bezel and 18 karat gold strip going through the stainless steel on the bracelet and also the dial. You have a date over there at six o'clock and a very, very subtle dial. It's very hard to capture. Uh, to be honest, I've struggled in the, in the photos as you'll see, but I've done my best. Uh, you've got the logo at the top and also a logo at six o'clock. Nice solid 18 karat gold um, signed LUC Chapard crown. As we flip it over, a signed case back featuring a quartz movement, and as I said, circa 1990s, and it has a beautiful deployment clasp with the Chopard logo proudly stated there. So you fold over each side and clip in, and then it just incorporates 
beautifully and obviously you bring it up like so. The size of the bracelet is on the website so you can see what size wrist it will fit uh, and links can be taken out, it's a little tricky but it can be done but a really, really wonderful ladies watch for someone for Christmas potentially. So go snap it up whilst you can, especially considering the price is super good for what these retailed at, which is insane. But let's show this one. Uh, no, I won't be showing this one on wrist. It probably won't fit my wrist, but this is 23 mil by 33 mil lug to lug. Only 5.5 mil thick and 16 mil at the lugs with an ever so slight taper down to the clasp. Really beautiful piece. Go check it out on the website today. And last but by no means least, a 2023 Tissot PRX 35mm in ice blue. This is the quartz model, the smaller size. It's fantastic. Let's take a closer look at it. Now, for what has arguably been one of Tissot's biggest successes in recent years, that's the PRX, and this is the 35mm quartz in ice blue. A very beautiful looking watch. Very clean aesthetic, very simple, but works so, so well. And the smaller case size is great for him or for her, to be honest. If you're a guy out there wondering about this size, it will totally work. Um, it is obviously smaller. Um, that's a given, obviously being 35 mil, but I think it really works on the wrist. You've got the integrated bracelet, deploying clasp, as you can see, where it says Tissot and the year of... Uh, they were founded, a nice, simple stainless steel case back. Inside is a quartz Tissot movement or a quartz ETA, I should say. And this one's from April 2023 with its box papers and receipt and all of its spare links. So again, another potential great gift option. And you're making, you're saving yourself a nice chunk on retail, especially for a watch that's been lightly worn. To be honest, there's barely any, any marks or wear on it. But let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. I think that's a really cool looking piece. Obviously the smaller size isn't gonna be for everyone, but I think if you're a, a guy out there wondering, you could totally wear it, you know, just, just wear, enjoy it, gift it for your wife and steal it. That's what I would do. <laughs> uh, so this is 35 mil by 44 mil lug to lug, 10 mil thick and 23.5 mil, and the largest point tapering down to the clasp. So go check out this wonderful watch on the website today. So there you have it guys and girls, 17 watches. I have no idea how long this video is gonna be and if you sat for all of it, well done you. You deserve, you deserve a Christmas present, so treat yourself to some whiskey or a watch. There's plenty here to choose from. Um, I really do appreciate it. As I said, this is the final drop of this year, so there will not be any more until the new year, probably a bit into the new year as well. So I appreciate all your patience. There will be about 120 watches on the website, roughly, uh, give or take, you know, 10. Um, so there's plenty to choose from on there. So enjoy your Christmas break. Have a wonderful new year. I will not be seeing you until after all of that. So keep well, keep safe. And I can't wait to start 2024. Where have the years gone? It feels like yesterday was 2018. Absolutely crazy. But uh, yeah, keep well. We'll see you all again next year. Take care.